Good morning and welcome to the Aviation and Transportation Subcommittee. Um, I am joined by Councilwoman Mendoza and Councilwoman Williams. So first is call to the public and I believe we don't have any. So next is the minutes of the meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Oh, anyway, <laughs> second. Motion to approve minutes. Meeting. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, the ayes have it. Looks like we have some visitors out there, some oh, young yes. Boy Scouts. Are you, boy, you want to come up and introduce yourselves? Are you just here for a badge? <laughs> hey, I'm impressed that you guys came down here, so you need to recognize yourselves. Can you I didn't see you. Side? Yeah, welcome. Hi, I'm Connor Carlson. <laughs> there you go. And I'm Colton Carlson. All right. Are you guys working on a badge? Yes. Very good. Welcome. Okay. The next is our consent uh, items. Um, do you wish to have any taken off? <coughs> no. Nope. Can I get a motion for items 2 through 13? Motion to approve consent items 2 through 13. Okay. okay all in favor say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Okay, we have some information items, 14 through 16. Do you guys need any additional information? I don't. Oh, yeah. good. Okay, well, let's move on then to our discussion and possible action. This is the Accelerated Pavement Management Program. The proposed work plans for fiscal year 19 through fis fiscal year 23. And welcome, Keeney. And thank you for all the pavement that's going on in our fair city. Everywhere you go, there is a road being paved. And I, the good news is I'm getting very few complaints. I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting more attaboys. <laughs> Take it away. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the subcommittee. Uh, I'm very excited to be here today. I know we provided an update on this item last month, um, but that was for information and, and, and discussion. This item is actually for action today, which is, uh, represents a lot of work by staff, by the public, by the council to get to where we're at today. And um, kind of my, my disclaimer or my, my prologue to this, the presentation would be, I've been with the city for 19 years, um, working as a city employee doing a lot of different projects, a lot of different uh, initiatives that we've been part of. Uh, but being six months now into the director role, uh, this is one of those things I've had a chance to be a part of, but also lead. And uh, it, it's been great working with the council, um, getting unanimous, unanimous support on this, this effort. Um, but also, I'm, I'm very thankful for our city staff who've been working tirelessly since council gave us direction on this item. And I also just wanted to thank our public because our public has really stepped up to really try to give us uh, input and feedback on this effort. Uh, so up here with me, I have Mark Glock, our Deputy Director over Street Maintenance Division. He's going to take over most of the presentation. I'm going to start the first part, which is really to kind of uh, introduce why we're here today. Uh, the first one is, is really because back in October, council gave us a direction because of of the way we were funding um, our street maintenance with transportation 2050 funding they really wanted to see us you really wanted to see us do a lot more work out there and uh, 200 million dollars is the pro program we have in place uh, to be able to advance 200 million dollars on top of everything else we do with other funding uh, resources that we have available to us and we were able to do that and look at it in two different ways it was a five-year plan um, that we got approval from council to move forward with. Uh, phase one was to really accelerate what we were doing today. Um, but acceleration meant that we had to find more projects. And so what we did is we looked at our five-year plan of mill and overlay projects, asphalt mill and overlay projects, which is our most significant and comprehensive pavement maintenance type. And we said, we'll take that five years worth of projects and we'll shove it into the next two years. And uh, so that's why we have all the activity going on that we have right now um, with a lot of work going out on our city streets. Uh, so, but then what we needed to do was our phase two piece of this, which was really to try to figure out how to fill out the rest of that five-year accelerated plan. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Mark to take you to the rest of the presentation and tell you how we got to where we are with phase two. Thank you, Kenny. And good morning, Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee. There we go. Uh, to, uh, to complete our five-year program, uh, we have used uh, our, our standard practices. Our, we use our van to go out and analyze the roads. And it measures the roughness in the road, 
the cracks in the road, the rideability. And what that gives us is our uh, condition payment index. That's a number that, that's given for rapport roads. Uh, you get low numbers. For newer roads, you get higher numbers, up to about 100 is our top, zero is our lowest. So we have used our van to capture the information for our city streets. But we've, what we've also done is we've gone out uh, and done field verifications to make sure that the information that we're getting from the van, uh, of course, has been very good. But every now and then we find areas that we have missed, we're able to get out and field verify those. And we also use information from the public, and I'll get into that in a little bit, as far as our field verification to make sure that we're capturing the roads that we should be capturing. And so once we capture all of that information, we analyze the data and we develop what our program, what we feel what our program should be. And an item that we have used uh, recently with this initiative is our public information, uh, our public outreach. To date, we have touched uh, 77 community meetings uh, with a couple more to go. And with that information, we have provided, or with, with the presentation we've done at the community meetings, uh, we presented what our program is, what the public should expect, and we've also given them avenues as far as being able to offer input into what our future program would look like to, to complete our five-year program. So what we've done in our community meetings is we've handed out uh, a form that they can either do by hand or another very, very nice tool that we've developed is our internet-based mapping tool, which is a great opportunity for citizens to, uh, to offer their input. To date, we have over 6,700 um, uh, hits on our, on our um, map, and uh, they're able to either uh, tell us if there's cracks in the roads, potholes, uh, roughness of the road, and what they do is they'll go in, and at the bottom left of the screen, you'll see a push buttons or little pins that they can actually take those and put those on a specific location on the map, which are really cool to where we can actually go out and look at those specific spots. So say, for instance, somebody wanted to uh, look at a crack. So they, they click on the crack, and they go up, and it would put in a push pin right, right at that location. And it's um, uh, interesting that... Um, and no surprise that a lot of the information that we're getting from the map is correlating to what our data has. Uh, one uh, example is Thunderbird Road. Thunderbird Road was a tough road, and it was nonstop pins from uh, we've done from um, uh, Cape Creek all the way to 19th Avenue, 19th Avenue to I-17 is going to follow. But that, that whole segment was just riddled with pins. But, so it shows that our information that we're capturing out in, the, out in the road is working. But there are also some areas that were not in our map, in our list. So what we're doing is we have gone out and filled, verified what those locations should look like compared to our program. So what we've developed with this, with this program is uh, we've completed our, our five-year program. Uh, and the table that you're looking at is broken out into uh, per council district. And what you're seeing is a very aggressive schedule. Um, through our five-year program, we're going to be hitting 1,600, over 1,600 of our city streets. And that's an, out of our 5,000 streets that we have. So that's about 34% of our roadways we're going to be hitting. With that, we are hitting about, we're hitting 67% um, of our arterial roadways, and 28% of those are our overlay program, which is very aggressive, and, and uh, we're getting a lot of compliments about that. So once we've developed our program, we need to go out to our, our partners who use the roadways. And, and yes? Just going back to the um, previous slide, um, because our district sizes are very yes yes yeah, so for example district 4 is more compact and small so it has less miles that's correct but it probably serves a lot more people because it it's part of the central part of Phoenix correct yeah, that's correct okay. so with with the miles and we've looked at the analysis of per district and percentages of miles in each one of the districts and we hit 
fairly closely what to what our percentages should be. And, and you're right, uh, the, it looks a little disparaging as far as the numbers, but District 4 has the less miles of roadway, right. but they are, are definitely getting the, the treatments that are being okay. looked at. Perfect, thank mm -hmm. you. So again, our, our partners uh, in our right-of-way, uh, our, our internal departments, water is one of the big users. We work with them daily on any conflicts, any projects that they have come up, any emergencies that they are working on. And we're very diligent on trying not to cut our pavement. That's the worst thing we can do with our new asphalt. Uh, other other um, partners that we have are utility companies. We know that uh, construction is going hot and heavy right now. And so we are working with each one of our utility partners to make sure that we are impacting, uh, that they're not gonna impact our, our new roadways. We're doing our very best. We are uh, a couple of different times we've worked with, uh, most of the it was Cox. Um, we were supposed to be paving on, on a Monday. Uh, they came to us on a Thursday saying, we need to get in the road, you gotta hold off. We couldn't hold off. Uh, our, our timeline when we set out for our notifications, public expects us to be in to do that work. So what Cox did was they accelerated their timeline, worked over the weekend, got the work done. So that was a great, uh, uh, complement of, of our working. The last one, uh, our partner is our, our public, our, our private developments. Private developments, again, uh, it's, it's very busy with development out there and we're working to try to minimize any of those, any of those types of uh, conflicts. So uh, next steps, as uh, Kenny is saying, was we're, we're looking for approval. We've gone through CTC in, in April got unanimous, unanimous approval from CTC. We're looking for approval from the subcommittee, of course. And then lastly, uh, with approval, we'll uh, go to full council in June. So um, that's the end of the presentation, but um, it's been a very exciting uh, program to be a part of, uh, being able to have the, uh, the support that we've had. Uh, the community input, uh, their awareness of our program. It has really helped helped us out as far as getting the work done. We're gonna be, be very busy here in the next couple months and uh, it, I'm glad to hear that we haven't had, if any complaints, I know we always get a few, but uh, we do our very best. We've, we've done a lot of outreach and we're doing more and more of this uh, to where the public's aware that we're gonna be in their neighborhoods. So with that, I'd like to uh, answer any questions you may have. Do you have any questions? Uh, do you contract out a lot of this extra work? Yes, uh, all of our, our all of our construction work is contracted. We uh, we do, um, go through a procurement process. Uh, we have contractors. We have three paving contractors that are on contract. Those are the ones that do our mill and overlay. Those mm -hmm. are the big ones. But we also have a number of others that do our other treatments, such as our crack seal, fog seal, and other treatments that we have. Uh, a big player that we have right now are, is our concrete ramps. Uh, concrete ramps are a big part of our, our prep work that we're doing. Okay. And if you're seeing concrete ramps coming into the neighborhood, you know we're not far behind. <laughs> so uh, it's um, to get a, an area done with the ramps, especially in, in, a, in a residential area, there's, there's quite a few of them, as you can imagine. We have uh, 20, I think the last count was 25 different crews that are out citywide doing concrete ramps. Yeah, I see them everywhere. I always, people say, what's going on? I say, that's good news. It, it's good news, <laughs> yes. So I, I just, thank you. Uh, it seems like October to now might be a long time to a lot of people, but actually you did a lot of work in a very short time. And I really appreciate the public input, uh, you went beyond, and uh, you can tell that's why we're not getting calls. People <laughs> have been participating in the process and looking forward, so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Madam Chair, I just, I, I, thank you, Councilwoman Williams, for those comments. I just wanted to point out, and I, I'd be remiss if I didn't, that public input tool that we talked about and that Mark talked about in the presentation, that was homegrown. That was our city staff putting it together um, in a, in a few weeks, few months, um, to put that together and make it live. And I think it's something that we want to uh, use more in the future, um, tools like that to be able to have input opportunities for the public to provide that. I should say that even though our data that we used for putting together the five-year plan, 
we had to cut the date off the, the input at one point in time. We, we've continued to continue, uh, we've continued to collect that public input. And this five year plan, even though it gets approved, as Mark noted, we, we've got conflicts that might happen. We have things that may move some projects here and there uh, a year or something like that. We'll continue to work through and look at that public input to be able to help us guide those changes that may happen over the next five years as well. So um, even though the public still providing the input, it's still valuable to us. We're still going to retain it. We're still going to use it for the, over the next four or five years. Um, just to talk a little bit about how effective these neighborhood meetings were, um, I had one in the Moon Valley area, and Keeney came to it, and he pulled up 7th Street just south of Thunderbird, and there was one little ping on it. The next morning, I got up and looked at it, and there were about 50 of them or something. <laughs> it was quite a few. Quite so a few. your outreach was very, very effective, and I really do appreciate that. And I think you've got a, a number of great streets to be paved in the coming years. I did want you to maybe talk a little bit about the local streets and what's going on with that, because really our accelerated was mainly for our major streets, but I think it's helped out the local streets as well, correct? Yeah. Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee, that's a great point um, that that when we looked at this, we, we realized that the council took action on $200 million to advance major street pavement maintenance work, um, but we saw it also as an opportunity. Well, we didn't want to be where we're only just taking um, a look at the major streets and, and neglecting the local streets. So we had some cash balance that we had for, uh, from our other revenue sources, and we basically took our five-year program of overlays on our local streets, and we did the exact same thing that we're doing with the major streets. We put five years of projects into two years. The only difference is, is after those two years, we don't have money to fill the gap that we create in the, in the three years three, four, and five of that plan. So that's something we can potentially have further conversations with the council if there's something that we'd like to be able to do on local streets after the initial two years of this five-year plan. I think that might be worthwhile because I do hear from a lot of our neighborhoods who are still looking for their local streets to be paved. Um, maybe you can also speak to one of the big issues I know that was in District 8 was sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you can do to incorporate that, or are you incorporating that? Um, Madam Chair, Councilwoman Mendoza, uh, as part of this program, we, we um, the prep work we do is um, tied to what the federal government requires to do as far as ADA, and so we do the ADA ramp work um, as part of that. But when we're talking about sidewalk projects, we have separate pro programs to do sidewalks, um, not just standalone ones that we've had historically in, in, in our department to look at sidewalk improvement projects. But I would also say that with our um, with the Transportation 2050 monies, there's a separate program called Mobility Improvements monies where we've had uh, looked at mobility areas around the city where we're using a number of factors looking at zero car households, um, uh, socioeconomic data that we looked at a holistic amount of data to be able to come up with these areas around the city and each one of those areas are we're looking at sidewalks street light improvements those kind of things to be able to provide safe connectivity to our major transit corridors our major street corridors so those that's a process that's underway right now that we're already identifying those projects um, and we can obviously uh, be able to provide updates to this subcommittee at a future date about where we're standing with some of those implementation projects in those early um, mobility areas that we've already analyzed and assessed and work with the public as well well thank you um, I will say that the list for the coming fiscal years looks great I know my um, committee member for the CTC scrutinized it and he was very happy to see that the roads that are included in district 3 are roads that we really do need to have paved so with that can I have a motion Move approval of staff recommendation to the council. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you so much. Thank you. So next on our agenda is call to the public, and we still don't have any. Okay. So are there any requests for future agenda items? Well, that's the end of the meeting. Then we're adjourned. Thank you. Yay.